Welcome to part two of my camper videos, installing the subfloor and other footnotes. These are for the bathroom, believe it or not. That big piece will slide up in there under the cabinets and everything. This piece will go right here. And I have the cabinets jacked up a little bit to give me some more space between those parts and so I could get the old wood out of there. I also took out the door frame here. Man, that was a pain to get out. This oh, this side came out easily, but this side was ridiculous. They have these screws going from in here and into the door frame. Like, why? I had to pry those off and wreck these edges a little bit. And obviously there's no way to get to those screws from the inside of here without taking all this out. I'm gonna get some Kills Sealer Primer paint for this as a little weather protection. I'm not gonna do anything over that because it gets expensive real fast. I'm just gonna make sure my camper doesn't leak again. I'll be checking it every six months and resealing it if I have to. I just gotta cut out the toilet hole for this. Luckily this thing threads off of here so I'll be able to cut that hole, lay that down here, and thread that back on. For any pipes that are fixed in there, I'm just cutting the slits out. Yes, this is disgusting, but I'm over it. It's dry at least. So I found that the walls are mostly supported by these outriggers. that stick off the main frame so the weight is on the outriggers not on these the unsupported pieces of plywood that stick out so I removed the old wood out of out from under there and I just have this chisel wedged in there so it doesn't sag too much like overnight because I'm not putting the wood back in right away and I also have a jack helping to hold that up a bit. Just something to note if you're working on your trailer, the walls might be supported by outriggers. You can see that even though there's an outrigger right there, you can see the plywood has sagged over time. It's not gonna sag any more than that because the outrigger's there. And that I read is a common thing with these older toy hauler trailers. believe how well that works. That worked out way better than I thought it was going to. I cut each piece of wood so that the edges would rest on half of each frame rail or whatever so that the next piece of wood the edge will lay there and there'll be no soft spots with the edges like caving in like the other guy had. On this side that worked out perfectly. Right here, it's a little bit, I might have to shave down my next piece of wood. But we'll see what happens. That screw is stopping this whole board from sliding in. Well, that side was a pain, but it fits. So I had to jack up that cabinet, as you can see. And uh, there was a slight gap in that side right there, so I just screwed it in right there, hit it on that side, and 
it closed the gap. My measurements are pretty good. I'm gonna have to shave out this hole a little. So for the next step, I need to remove the freshwater tank so I can jack up that corner of the cabinet so I can slide this piece of wood into there. Well, there's the tank. So this is where the water was pouring out of when I would fill the tank all the way and then the water would go up on top of here and rest against the wood floor and rot away my floor. So there's the fill and vent. This should not be open. So the floor is coming along. I have that two by four there to provide some support until I can get the water tank back in because the water tank actually provided some of the floor support. And if you're wondering about how I'm gonna put the insulation in, I'm actually gonna put most of it in from under the camper. There's no way I can put insulation down and then slide the wood. It's just gonna mangle the insulation. Gotta take the fridge out because it's too heavy and that part's just bowing inwards. Here's the back of the fridge. Got the propane line off. Got the electric unplugged. Fuck. Forgot to disconnect a wire. The jack lifting up on this cabinet and the ceiling where the AC is and the TV's there and the fridge is there. It seems like all the weight is like coming down in this one spot and also that whole bed thing hanging off the wall too. There's no way to lift it up from underneath anymore because that wood is blocking everything. So <laughs> this is all I could do to get that leg to pull, to pull back out. Now Gonna finish hitting that wood in. All right, so there it is. It's not perfect, but it is perfectly solid. I used the flat bars in between these floors to give a support here. Yeah, there's a big gap right there, but it doesn't really matter. As you can hopefully see, my wood goes all the way to the front of the frame and goes on top of it where it's supposed to be. And I've been sealing any gaps. Still need to cut in holes for the table and the bathroom plumbing. I'm gonna add a trap to the shower drain because there was not one before. Yes, I'm mixing PVC and ABS. They don't sell ABS near me, so I don't have much of a choice. I could replace all the plumbing in here, but I do not want to do that using rubber couplers and ABS to PVC cement. This would not fly in a house. It does not meet plumbing code in most states. I've read that the ABS and PVC expand and contract at different temperatures. Obviously, over time, that might cause leaks. But I'm not really worried about it for the couple connections that I'm making. I'll be watching this for leaks. I'm also going to make this accessible so I can look under there. This was all fortified in there before. 
Here's the floor that I'm going to put on. Got it on the clearance rack. Paid 32 bucks for two packs, 40 square feet. This is called Park Lodge Oak. Got my underlayment. All cut and ready to go in. That'll be in a different video. Then in another video, I got to lift that wall and support it with angle iron between the two outriggers. This wall is staying up fine because the stair assembly actually helps support the floor. So you got an outrigger there, 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 and one up in there. So there's plenty of support on this side. This side has lifted itself back up. It's pretty straight. This side is still crooked, so I need to add some support. And I also got to reinstall this wall that kind of popped out from doing all this. I reinstalled the thermostat over here. I had it hooked up directly to the heater like over there because this wire was cut somewhere by the previous owner so I just ran a new one. I gotta build a little cabinet door for there. That was enclosed before. I cut it open and there's a ton of space back there for storage. I reinstalled the appliances, I reattached the propane lines, I cleaned out the air ducts, made sure everything's working. I also reinstalled the door frame. I wanted to leave that door frame off and make a big custom door because that's a lot of space without this door frame. And that door is pretty small, but I decided to just reinstall it. I also wanted to paint the cabinets satin black to go with my floor, but that's not happening this year. That's just more work, more money, more time. I already spent a ton of time and money on this that I didn't expect to be spending. Two things I will be doing are, I'm gonna get a flat screen. I wanted to take that cabinet out so I could just mount the TV to the wall, but since that's screwed in from behind, that's not gonna happen. And mattress replacement. I'm not sleeping on those 11 year old mattresses. So once that floor is done, that's it for the work on this camper for this year. I resealed the roof already. I used a ton of sealant. These are all empty. I also replaced the fridge drain and I have it permanently hanging out here so that I never forget to pull it out. The old design was that they just left it inside of there and you have to open this up and pull it out every single time you use the fridge. And they also used an inferior material. This is part of the old hose. It literally just fell apart. So I replaced it with flexible PVC line. I'm also replacing the lag bolts for the awning. I used some angle fasteners to attach the walls to the floor in some hidden areas up in the cabinets and on the bathroom wall. In some spots like there I'll just have to send a screw through the floor and into the wall. The door works perfectly as it should now. It wasn't quite right before. That is what's supposed to happen. When the outer door shuts on the screen door, it's supposed to release the screen door from that and attach it to the outer door, and then they become one. I also resealed this whole front window. Originally they used weather stripping to seal the window to the body of the camper, and that worked for like 10 years, but I had to redo it because with the way that roof slopes all the water comes down over the front and especially in the winter with the freezing and thawing it just compromises everything and expands and contracts and just eventually it leaks. I took it off, I put weather stripping, I put sealant, Dynaflex Ultra and that should hold up. This thing has a fuel tank, look at that.
12 gallons of fuel in there. Hasn't been started in a little while. I also want to put a compact washer dryer combo right here because I think that would be awesome and also I keep hitting my head off of that cabinet. That's why I have that hung there. This catches my eye, so I stopped hitting my head off of that. I also want to put solar on the roof to run vent fans and also to charge the battery. It does have a generator, but can't start the generator if the battery's dead. So thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more progress on the camper, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified when I upload videos. See you in the next one.